The greatest feeling in the world was holding my own gun. I'm hypertensive, but all my decisions been wholesome. My independence had me flipping on siblings I stole from. Said I'm just big and loud. Well, half a pound is my solid treatment. I punched out plugs I could've stopped from eating. Jackie Gleason on the TV while his mama's sleeping. That plate was made, or oh, he got that chick filleted like she Polynesian. The fucking niggas do to me though. So I stand there blinded while my jewelry glows. At the time, he was unsigned, and he wouldn't sign with Atlantic or Warner Brothers, so they were like, well, he ain't in our system. We're not going to do universal work for, for them. So anyway, we Lil' Kiki got taken off, and T. Ferris told me, man, why don't you write two new verses? Because I already had to write one new verse to cover Lil' Kiki verse that got took off. But he said, hey, man, why don't you write two new verses? Because there's just something about that verse that don't really go with this song. This is how I used to write verses back in the day. I would get, this is before I used to smoke a lot of weed. Now I smoke a little bit more, so it's easier for me to concentrate. But at the time, I wasn't smoking at all. So I'd go in there, you know, it'd be music. It'd be the, 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 the heater going. That would distract me from writing my verse. I, could, I can't think straight. So anytime I, I got to write a verse, I would get like the first, first, lit, first bar just so I can get the tempo on my head. Then I'd go in the, you know, the closet or the bathroom or go sit in my car. So sitting sideways, I went and sat in my car outside and I wrote my verse. Okay, when I come back in the booth to lay it, it's like the telephone game. You know, I tell you, you tell you, by the time I get back around to me, the story didn't change. That's how it was. Well, I'm writing the verse, you know, to, to the beat, but in my mind, the beat going like this, but really the beat going like this. So <laughs> when I try to lay it, it's a little bit off. That's why I like in Steel Tip and Sitting Sideways, a lot of my earlier verses, my words would kind of be jumbled together where it was like a style, but it was not intentional. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, shit. That's crazy. <laughs> but T. Ferris said, man, look, the verse you saying on here, you saying some shit. You saying some good, you got some bars, but some about it, it just don't go to the tempo. It just don't go to the beat. And I was like, man, you crazy. Man, this verse is hard. Man, you crazy. I, just, I knew I had something, but he was like, yeah, it is hard, but it just don't go to the beat. And he, I was like, nah, I don't know. I ain't changing it, man. And he was like, all right, well, if you don't want to try it, you ain't got to try it. You, you know, it's your car, whatever you want to do. And he gave me that look like, you know, like Phil Jackson told me to, you know, to, to go out there. And I'm Scotty Pippen saying, nah, I ain't going out there. I ain't doing that. I ain't taking a last shot. I ain't doing it. And I was like, man, I can't let my coach down. So, man, he want to tell me to redo it. Fuck it. What's it going to hurt me? I'll write another verse. And that's what he said. You know, if you don't like it, if we don't like it, we'll use the other one. So I went in there, wrote two new verses. Those are the two verses that are on Sin Sideways. When you hear Sin Sideways, those mm -hmm. are the two new verses I wrote. Well, the first verse I originally wrote, I said, man, okay, we're not going to use this verse. But I know I said some shit. So I'm going to keep this. I'm going to keep it just in my back pocket, just in case we're on the road somewhere and say, like, you know, I don't know, Jay-Z say, hey, I want to get you on a song. All right, I got something. Ready. I'm ready right yeah. now. <laughs> shit. Or, or, or say, I, you know, we got to we gotta record something and I only got, like, 20 minutes. I, I don't got enough time to, to write my verse. All right, well, I got something that's hard or, you know, just whatever. I just got a verse I can always count on in my back pocket. I can always pull out. Mm -hmm. And then next thing you know, my boy Plain Pat. Plain Pat, he tried to sign me to Def Jam. They didn't want to sign me. They ended up not wanting to sign me, but we still kept in touch. He ended up signing Kid Cudi, managing Kid Cudi. He was Kanye a and R. I had just met, I had already met Kanye West and made his grills. So he said, hey man, I seen you met Kanye, you made his grills. Well, I'm his a and R. He say he fuck with your bars, he fuck with your music, but he's very particular. You know, he was taking people off Donda back in the day. You know how when oh, Donna came yeah, out there, yeah, I mean, yeah, he took my verse yeah. out to me. He was doing that back in the day. So, mm. but you know, I came from the Swisher house where you go in there, lay a verse, and like I say, it would get taken off or deleted anyway. Right, you know, right, sometimes right. by chance. So it was like one of them things where I, I wouldn't, you wouldn't take it personally. You'd be disappointed if your verse came up missing. But you know, it's just how it goes sometimes. So I already know, man, you come with it, shit, you gonna get your left on there. Right, if, you right. know, shit, they gonna find a way. Hey, hey, we lost the verse, but come back and lay it again. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you come with it, shit, they're going to they gonna keep it. So he told me, hey, man, look, he might not use it. He might use some of it, you know, whatever. But it's just an opportunity. It could be a real big look if he, if he use it. You ain't got to tell me. I already Jay-Z, you know, already blew up Kanye from using his production. When Kanye started rapping, it took him to another level. 
right. where I personally was a fan. Is you know, you look at Kanye, you know, they always talk about his beats, and at the time they didn't want to sign him because they didn't like his his, his bars and his lyrics. I was the reverse. I love Kanye bars, but his beats I didn't love. I loved his bars, his verses, but not necessarily his beats. I love them now, you know. But at the time, that wasn't just style. I was more, yeah, I was more fond of his lyrics than I was of his beats. So when he sent the, sent the song to get on, shit, I pulled. I got that. I got just the verse right here in my back pocket, just for this. I, I sent it to him, and he said, "Yeah." He said, "Yeah." Plain Pat said, "Yeah, man, Kanye feeling it." But he wants you to come out here and lay it in LA. So I'm saying, okay, they ain't gonna use my verse. It's like just step one of they're not gonna use my verse. You know what I'm saying? And Mike Jones had went in the studio with Kanye. Mike Jones wanted one of them soul samples. Kanye gave him a beat that wasn't a soul sample. Mike Jones didn't end up using the, the song. So when I first met Kanye, he was a little salty with me. Cause Mike Jones ain't use his beat. What? So <laughs> even to this day, I've always wondered, like, man, I wanted his drive slow to beat Mike Jones turned down. I wasn't in that studio, so I don't know. But I always wondered, I man, was that his way of, well, Mike ain't want it. Let me see if you gonna use it. You know what I'm saying? Right, and this right. is, you know, one of them kind of things. I always kind of wanted that. But anyway, he said, all right, come out to LA and lay your verse. He wanna be in the studio when you lay it. Man, bet. I went out to LA, me and my man Goo. We, we land on the plane, we come down the baggage claim. As soon as we come down the baggage claim, we got two LA sheriff detectives with their badges. Hey, you come here, you come here. We're like, what the fuck going on? So I see, you know, some camera footage, you know, equipment like on the side. It's LA. Of course, right, people, right. everybody got a camera. Yeah. Okay. Mike Jones had just got punked on MTV Punked. And when you get punked, you usually punk somebody else. So I was like, oh, man, this is a setup. Mike Jones and Kanye West and got together to get me punked on, on MTV. <laughs> I ain't going out like no hoe. If I get punked on MTV, I'm not going to be able to come back to my neighborhood. So shit, right, I'm, right. I'm, man, I'm going to go, man, you got me messed up. I start talking crazy to the cop because I thought we were getting punked. Now look, I know oh, not shit. to talk crazy to police, especially the LA Sheriff's Department. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> shit, but I thought I'm getting punked. Man, thank God that they, they let us make it because eventually the cops, he started getting upset with me because I was talking reckless to him. I was but like, what, what did they stop y'all for? Just random search. I don't know. Oh, maybe okay, we okay. looked like something. We had jewelry, grills, tattoos. I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it was random. Maybe somebody said something. Who knows? I just knew I was getting punked. So I was calling them all kinds of names, talking reckless to them. And Goo looking at me like, man, what is you doing? They about to whoop my ass. <laughs> shit, hey, I know HPD will whoop your ass, but LA Sheriff's Department? Yeah, they might leave your shit, ass. Shit, yeah, yes. I remember Kanye got pumped. What episode was that? That ain't nobody. MTV. Ain't no that, MTV. That's why I thought I was next. That's what I'm saying. No, his went out, so you felt that That's way. what I'm saying. I thought I was next. So, okay, I'm, I'm yeah. next in line to get pumped. Eventually, the other cop seen the other cop getting mad and was like, come on, they don't got nothing, let's let's go. So they left us alone and I'm like, where Ashton Kutcher at? And Goo was like, what you mean where Ashton Kutcher at? Bro, we about to get our ass whooped. <laughs> so then we go, we in the car, I'm in the car going to the studio. The It's before GPS, iPhones, all of that. So he like, you know, you print it. This is one of the things you print the directions out to make it, you know what I'm saying? I'm in a car service. He don't know where it's at. We in the left turning lane. The studio right there on the right, but we in the left turning lane. We had a red light. He say, oh, there go right there. He break off everybody at the light. He like turn right at the red light in the left lane. Just so happened it was a cop right there in the right lane. Woo -woo. God damn. We get put off, I said, God damn. Well, they couldn't get me the first time. Now they trying to, <laughs> they definitely gonna punk me now. So I just, I just knew I was not gonna make it to Kanye album. Soul of Brown. Look around you, man. You can find inspiration. You can find discouragement. It all depends on you. Perception is everything. Some people just hear another song. Some people hear the greatest. A nigga used to have no chill. Nowadays, I bump side A. Traffic on bumper to bumper, stuck on the highway. 